In this video we're going to look at arrays in JavaScript and to understand what arrays are, you can imagine if you're asked to write a program to store several different numbers into variables, you might end up with something like this, where you're defining each variable separately and assigning the number to it. And there's nothing wrong with that, we've got three variables, num1, 2 and 3, and each has got its own respective number. But what if you needed to store 50 different values? How about 100 or even 1000? It's fair to say that writing out all those variable definitions would be a bit of a waste of time. So arrays are used to deal with this problem and you can think of an array as like a list which basically holds a set of values and assigns it to one variable name. So generally you'll create arrays with square brackets and each value is separated by a comma, like this. And when we reference the array of numbers variable you can see we get that list of numbers returned. And it doesn't have to be numbers that you store in arrays, it can be any data type that's available in JavaScript. So here I've just created a variable called months of the year and assigned it some shorthand versions of January, February, March and April. So as you can see it's a shorter way of providing a list of values to a variable name rather than creating several similar variables with different values. So if you want to actually access one of the elements from either of those arrays, we can simply type the variable name and then use square brackets to access one of the individual elements and then just specify the index of where that element occurs. And the same way we dealt with strings in a previous lesson, you can see that the array is zero indexed. So if we want to get one, the first element from the array of numbers, we need to pass in a value of zero into those square brackets. So if we want to change a value that's in the array, we can simply reference its index again and assign a new value to it. So if I access the first element in array of numbers and give it a value of 10, you can see that now when the array gets printed to the console, the first value is 10. And when we access that first value using the zero index below, that also gives us back a value of 10. Just as a note, when assigning values to an array, they don't actually have to be all of the same data type. So for example, I could change that to the word 10. And you can see that even though the rest of the values in the array are numbers, the first element in the array of numbers array has actually changed to a string. So as with strings and numbers in JavaScript, there are lots of functions built in that can help you manipulate arrays. And they're mainly focused around adding and removing elements from them. So we'll look at those functions in just a second, but as with strings you can also find out the length of an array simply by accessing its length property. So if we want to remove an item from an array, there are two ways of doing it. We can either take one from the end of the array, for example the array of numbers that would be 9, or we could take one from the front of the array, so again that would be 1 in the array of numbers. And the function to take an element from the end of the array is pop. So if we call pop on the array of numbers array, you can see that the last item in the array 9 is returned to us in the console. And when we reference array of numbers again, you can see that the 9 has been removed and we're down to 8 elements in the array. So if you want to remove an element from the front of an array, you use the shift function. So this time when we call shift on the array you can see that 1, the first element in the array gets returned and when referencing array of numbers again you can see the 1 is no longer present in the array. So how about if we want to add values back to the array? Well there are two functions available that do the opposite of what we've just done and they are push and unshift. So you can see when the code runs again now in the console, when we call push, the uh, number 10 is actually put to the end of the array of numbers. And then when we call unshift, 20 is placed at the start of the array. So between these four functions, you can actually control where your elements are being either removed or added to. And it's just a case of familiarizing yourselves with what each one does and when you should use each one. And there are a couple of other functions which are really handy for helping you work with arrays. And the first one is slice, which helps you to extract part of an array. So you might remember the slice function on our string lesson, and it does exactly the same sort of thing. If we call slice on an array, we pass in a start value and an end value. And as you can see, I'm starting at the front of the array by passing in a zero and just extracting the first two elements. 
but you can see slice is not destructive, it won't actually modify the array, because if I reference months of the year again, I've got the other two elements still present. There is another function though which is a bit more destructive, or constructive depending on how you look at it, and that is the splice function. So on first glance, splice looks to be doing exactly the same thing that slice is doing, but if we reference the months of the year variable again, you can see this time the array has actually been modified to remove those values from the array. So the reason why splice can be considered constructive as well is because we can actually use it to add values at a certain point in the array as well. So for example, we could add a new month in between January and February. And the second number that we pass into splice really determines whether or not we remove the item or not. So if I pass in a value of one, it means we're going to remove one value from the array. But if I change that to a zero, you can see that now the splice function doesn't remove February, it literally just inserts that new month value in between January and February. So it would be worth your while spending some time now working with arrays if you go into your console and start using the push, pop, shift and unshift functions. And once you feel comfortable with those, move on to looking at slice and splice, and particularly with splice, how you can actually use it to insert items into an array, as well as removing items too. Once you feel happy with working with arrays, let's move on to the next lesson, which is working with objects.